I'd like to start the meeting at 608 on uh, January 15th, Wednesday, January 15th, 2020. Um, we're gonna start with amendments to the agenda and I don't see any here and I don't have any at this point. So we could just go ahead and move Other to- Other than comments to the community didn't make it on there or from the community. Uh, well, um, being a special select board meeting, if there are, I'd like to go ahead and wait till the end of the meeting for that. Uh, so I'd like to move straight to the unfinished business in the budget while we have Linda here. So that being said, I'd like to move to unfinished business, the budget for 2020, 2021. And I don't know where I'd like to start. It's up to you guys. I don't know either. Just talk it, start talking it out. The, uh, so um, our town clerk, long time is retiring. And um, uh, that has some implications for town meeting day. Um, the primary implication that I respond this budget for is the fact that the town can choose to elect a town clerk and a treasurer independently. So coupling the salaries together as one uh, for budget purposes is probably not the best idea. Uh, we don't know what the town's gonna do. So that's what this budget reflects. And we'll just take, we'll just go through it real quick. Um, so you can see over here, we have the town clerk, treasurer, uh, and recording fees, which make up the bulk of the salary for the town clerk's office. Um, in 2019, this was the town clerk's salary, 10963 for 32 hours. Um, it was a $15 an hour rate. This was a salary for the treasurer. It was a $13 an hour rate. Clearly that will not work if we have separate a separate clerk and treasurer, right? So these two columns represent what Jen had pitched before. Um, but I'd like to concentrate on this column, which rethinks things and puts things in the perspective of we could have an independent treasurer and an independent um, town clerk. Um, so I'm proposing that we have a 32 hour town clerk, I know you and I talk differently, um, at $20 an hour, which would bring it to 18280 for just the town clerk's salary plus the fees, right? So what is that? 18 put 25, 33 grand a year. It's a decent salary plus full benefits. I think we'd get some candidates interested in that. Um, I'm also proposing that we have a treasurer for $20 an hour at 20 hours a week. That's um, I think what Linda said uh, would be required. Um, that brings uh, the treasurer's salary to 20,800, um, but no benefits, right? 20 hours a week. I'm also proposing adding in 24 hours for an assistant at $17 an hour, which is what Allison is roughly making now. Um, this brings the total hours up to 76 hours per week for the town office. Right now, we have 64 hours for the town office. And it's not enough, right? Works, we need more. Things are overflowing. So sticking with this column, we have $10,000 for a bookkeeper. Um, that's Linda's suggestion. And if you note, I put $5,000 in here for consulting. It may or may not be enough, but the idea is the same thing with Lucian. Um, she'd be able, people would be able to pick up the phone, call, maybe she could do a day in the office and she'd be compensated for her time at $20 an hour. Just pull that out of the air. That's um, about 250 hours of consulting time for Linda. That brings the budget to 129,503 or a 6% increase. So in the same token, if someone does come and want, and the town, if the town, let me say this correctly, if the town does decide to elect a town clerk and treasurer as the same person, we can amend the budget from the floor. 
And I would suggest this amendment, but we don't have to go there now. We have plenty of time to think about that. All right, is everybody with me so far? Does it make sense? So once again, it's 32 hours for a town clerk at an hourly rate of $20 an hour. It's 20 hours for a treasurer at an hourly rate of $20 an hour. It's 24 hours for an assistant at an hourly rate of 17 an hour. There's one medical, one family plan in here because the clerk qualifies for benefits. And this is the all-in cost. That one? Or that one? Right. And I'm uh, sorry, one hundred twenty-nine thousand five hundred versus uh, yeah, versus what it is this year is one hundred twenty-two. It's a six percent, five point eight percent increase. And if the uh, if the individual runs for both clerk and um, if they get elected as both as both, does it go back down to it, their this is one twenty-one four forty-three would be the budget that. I'm proposing, but what kind of, is that an increase? Over no, that's a decrease, decrease of about 0.7 percent. But that would have to be done from the floor, I think. Mm -hmm. And remember, the underlying budget that we're currently in was um, set, I believe, with the idea. You know, of the eighteen thousand dollars savings in health care when I went off. Mm -hmm. So there's eighteen thousand dollars extra money in the one hundred twenty two because we budgeted for more health care than you No, know. the opposite. If that budget would have been higher. Ah. Yep. Yep. So is there any discussion? Any thoughts on that? Any other ideas on how to proceed? Well, you have to. It's it's the right approach. So you put in the one family plan for both in for the clerk. either scenario because there's only one the, technically full time person. Right. The clerk, would, the clerk would earn it either way, whether we had a full time clerk That's what or I was gonna a clerk. Say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one has forty hours for the clerk. Right, but it's twenty. And treasurer. Twenty for the treasurer. <coughs> twenty for the. Because don't clerk. you have to have a minimum of 32 hours to get our insurance? That's why I'm wondering 30, if we have to yeah. reword something. So if they have 20 and 20, they don't qualify for insurance that way. No, they would. That's the same person. They're working 40 hours. But two separate positions. Just what Linda has now. That's yeah. what I'm asking. That's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah. Yes. Once exactly. You're 20 and 20 now? No, I'm just everything. <laughs> I'm 34. Totally. Totally it's totally both totally. rolled into 34 hours. That's the first one. That it's really two. hard to pull No, no, I got out. that. But I'm it just is. trying to yeah. say we tried over and over. Yeah. I got all that. But so what I'm saying person. is our paper says, or our policy says that you have to be hold a position working 32 hours right. to get but the insurance. So by 20 and 20, you're not. We're going to have to reword something. No, Make it would be one position. Turp Clerk, treasure, as one or two hats. Wearing two hats. We don't have to reword right yep. That's just wearing two hats. That's what I'm That would be just administrative. Yeah. No, I think this is the most logical way to break it out because right now you can be the clerk and treasurer, or we might have to just budget for both, and it's just be prudent to budget for both because that's the larger number. So the town on town meeting day, we can't in the morning to appoint a treasurer. We can just do that and, uh, you know, think about that. Do we have to change policy to appoint? State law. It's just, okay. So we can appoint a treasurer. We can have the town vote to appoint the treasurer. And if they voted yes, then we could appoint the treasurer to the town clerk if we thought that was appropriate, if they had skills. Or we could take resumes and find the most viable candidate, and, that's and it opens up the job search outside of the Wolcott borders. Right, right. Which Remember, is, the treasurer- VLCT just hit on that, and then please- The treasurer has to be a Wolcott resident, right, if they're gonna be elected. Elect. Right. 
Uh, so we wouldn't have to change town policy. We'd still be within Vermont law if we were to appoint as opposed to elect a treasurer. Right. 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 And that wouldn't have to be a separate article on town meeting day. I, yes. I think it would. Yes, it would. It would be. It would. It would need to be on shall, the board. Shall the voters allow the select board to appoint a treasurer? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Right. Something to think about. Absolutely. It, it yeah, op opens it up beyond, I mean, a lot of the, when we were doing the TA research, a lot of the organization of government came to the fact that when it was organized, you only had access to town members, town, you know, taxpayers or local residents because people didn't have trucks and can traverse five, 10 miles to get to here. Yeah. But since, it, you know, we have an assistant town clerk who lives outside of the town borders. Yeah. We were able to hire. So, so a couple other things. Um, De Deb sent an email out with a couple other really potent points. Um, one is um, the town clerk. It's one hundred percent within the town clerk's um, purview to hire whatever assistant they want, right? And it's 100% within the town clerk's purview to keep whatever office hours they want. So, um, as long as the work gets done. Yeah, as sure. As long as, the, as long as the work gets done, right. Yeah. Well, they could work and have the office closed. Sure, as long yeah. as the work gets done. They could choose Saturdays their day of work. Right. So, just keep that in mind. So, any other questions about the town clerk's budget or? What we're doing through here. Is the bookkeeper in these numbers here? The bookkeeper is in these numbers. That's this line right here, that 10,000. So treasurer or not, bookkeeper's still a line item. Yeah. And, and Linda, you still think that's necessary, right? I think for a couple of years, depending on who the treasurer is. Yeah. So I've had conversations with under Mullins, our auditor, I have some emails about it. Um, when she gave me the um, cost of doing the audit next year, she kind of mentioned on there that um, typically when a new treasurer comes on, that they their auditing firm has to put in more time um, with this treasurer to, to teach them and, and do a lot of the, the work. Um, and so I emailed her today and asked her what her rate was. It's $200 an hour. Nice. So, so I said, you know, I was trying to compare whether a bookkeeper at $50 an hour, two days a month, versus her added services. And she, I have an email I read to, to Michael, said that, it would be more financially feasible to do this. Right, and then maybe you have her quarterly or biannually. Just, just for the twice a month, right. and, and so maybe not, you know, maybe once a month, but at the end, there's a lot of work to get that audit up and ready, uh, the general journals and so forth, and closing out the year, the inventory for the town garage. There's tons and tons of stuff that has to be done. Um, this woman that we're using used to work for this auditing firm. Um, she worked for the town of Barrie. She has her own um, bookkeeping services. Um, she's been helping out a little bit already. Great. I did contact her to see if that's something that she would be interested in doing, and she was. She's not interested in much more than that. But that would fit in with the ten thousand mm -hmm. dollar requirement. Right. Yeah, good. Do we have to put our put it out for bid for our auditors, or do we not? Have we just I have out? for I I have a number of years done that and uh, really gotten no response. Mm -hmm. We've basically used them since nineteen ninety five. It's easy because they can carry the balances from year to year. They're not redoing everything, so they know. But you have everything in QuickBooks, right? 
Yeah. So when you're talking about the percent increase or decrease, you know, depending on that, is that include the bookkeeper? It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got 129,000 total. I broke my reading there. 129,503. Just, just for information, that's two thousand dollars less than it was two years ago. Right, because of the insurance. Because of the insurance. Right. And that's what I was trying to bring um, out. You can't compare those two years there. Yeah, I see. Right. I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fair point. Linda, when, how is the, the warning generally put in the, in the uh, I forgot the book, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Town of Clark. Is it Town of Clark Treasurer or are there two separate lines? Two separate lines. Two separate lines. The first is the clerk. Right off because the clerk is taking minutes and stuff. The clerk is in, and then you go on to um, town officers, and the first one in the town officers is usually the treasurer, okay. and then the select board. And the that's, so that's the way it's been, right? It's definitely two positions. Right, I understand that. Yeah. yeah could be most, most small towns, correct me if I'm wrong, most towns are more than size. Maybe a little larger uh, combined the town clerk and treasurer, right? I mean, I mean, that's it's how the same, they run. Right? right, the same person does it, but I think it's two separate. It's two separate things, but generally in, in most of the small towns in, in Vermont, mm -hmm. the same person is the town clerk as the mm -hmm. and, and the treasurer. And it's not until you get into bigger towns that you see two separate people. Uh, I like what you've done. Awesome. Um, oh, that was, it was Jennifer and, and Linda. Oh, yeah, I like what you've done. I like, I like the way you laid it out there. Um, I think it gives you a lot of flexibility, uh, depending upon who gets selected. You know? um, and and I, I wouldn't go in to the <coughs> meeting. This is just me talking. I wouldn't go into the meeting. I mean, you're only talking. What eight thousand dollar difference or something? Yeah, it's about eight twenty one versus one hundred twenty nine. Yeah, I wouldn't go in. I had that in my pocket, but I wouldn't play that card unless you absolutely had to, because it would be good to have some flexibility for the first year of anything. You know, moving forward. That's that's a good point. The, the thing I'm, I'm struggling with is. If one person does it with this scenario, we have 52 hours a week for that one person. So, well, you don't have to make it work 52 hours. Right. That's, you know, I mean, yeah, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. You've got some flexibility. You've got some flexibility. Uh, um, and, and I guess what I'm thinking about is do you even want to ask the town appointment or do you just want to run with it as it is? And, um, let me place. Let me, let me run some politics past you. You know, you're going to be asking the town to, to latch on to the concept of the town administrator, right? Uh, yeah, that's the next. Okay. Um, I, I wouldn't give them too many new things to chew. I see what you're saying. Yeah, but you know, one could provide relief. Or the other. Exactly. And that's why I say that you still got some flexibility here. Okay. I mean, you got some financial flexibility and you got some power flexibility. Um, and and you're, you're, make, you're making the budget up as you have to because you don't know. Right. Um, but I, I wouldn't play that $8,000 real quick. You understand what I'm saying? I guess you don't know how things are going to play out. Um, and um, I, I don't, I'm, I, I'm, I guess I'm asking the question rhetorically. If you ask this town, a town meeting, a lot of them coming in cold to approve the concept of the town administrator, and then the select board wants to appoint a treasurer, I'm not sure how that's going to get, I'm not sure it's going to be perceived the way you want it to be perceived. Yeah, possibly not. So, just saying, think about it. 
Okay. So how does this reflect? How does it? How? What's going on with the entire budget? So we have a we have it kind of roughed in here. Um, and I'll start at the top. Is this in our? No. 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 Okay. Uh, this was we just worked this out at like no, two this great this afternoon. Um, but so this is last year the column. <coughs> This is the proposed for this year, and the bolds are the totals for the department. And then this column shows the increase in percentage. This column shows the increase or decrease in dollars. So, athletic, cemetery, constable dogs, level funded. Debt. This is a big one. Uh, our debt's going up quite a bit. 53,000, and that's for the North, flood loan. North Wilkes Road. Right. So keep, keep that in mind. Our budget is very vulnerable to one off things. We have no revenue but the tax base. So that's one argument I think the board has to make for the town administrator, is it's actually in the citizen's best interest and reduces their tax, tax risk conceivably. So we have a $53,000 bump in our debt. And uh, when we get to the bottom, I broke it out in the percentage increase without that debt, because that's a fixed cost. That's an act of God thing that, that is, we can't do anything about. We're going to get reimbursed for that, though, right? Is that part of the um, hope? Yeah. Well, hope. That's the hope, yeah. Yes. Yep. But we don't know why. But obviously no. not within that. Right, yeah. not necessary. Yeah, definitely not. So elections went up sixteen hundred because we have the we have to buy the tabulator. No, it, no, no. We have a tabulator, but it's because every other year yes. we have the general and primary election. Mm -hmm. So we have to pay the sec the secretary of state pays for half of the tabulator. We have use and we have to pay the other half of programming it for the ballot, and we have to pay higher fees in election officials. But that's in every other year. Gotcha. Um, emergency management is level funded. The fire warden went up 50 bucks. Um, and here is a 2% raise for Sally. Um, so that adds two thousand dollars to the library budget. Uh, the health department is level funded. The highway department. The highway department is going up three point six five percent, and that is outstanding yeah. for getting a full time guy from eighteen thirty to twenty two fifty and all the maintenance that we had to do, and Lucian's consulting time in there, and the bridge rental. And the six thousand dollars for mowing, and yeah, fifty-two grand for paving. I guess that went down a little, but we doubled culverts, right, Lucian? Yes. Yeah, we have we have to for the, <laughs> road. I mean, for the <laughs> yeah. inventory report. That yeah, I mean we have to. Um, we did lower bridge maintenance ten thousand yes. bucks. Um, if you look at the actuals, not much maintenance has been done on bridge on bridges. Do we have to clean or power wash or sandblast any of them after the winter? I mean, we got yeah, we got to clean them up in the spring. But that should be should. I talked to Jim and he said if he could get the people, he'd help us with the fire trucks. Oh, cool. he's done great. It's, we more, have 75. it's more maintenance. It's more labor than anything. Right. Yeah. And we have $7,500 to play with for bridges, so it's not like we cut it to zero. Um, there's under labor cost. This includes $21,000 of overtime, uh, $23,000 of overtime. So keep that in mind. We had an overtime phase this year to try and track it, which we haven't done in the past. Great. I was looking at Hyde Park's budget, something that may, we may want to do in the future is they break out their winter costs and their summer costs. It was an interesting perspective. Um, 
So it, it went up 22,000 bucks, 3.65%. Mike, up, yes. at, up at the top there, the temporary labor. Yeah. The 10,000. Yeah. That's just to call in someone if we. That's for Lucian and oh, Jim Parody. Yep, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were putting 10,000 in there for the um, slip boards assistant. Well, that's what this will become. Um, we have the 40, that was the idea going forward is Lucian's not going to be needed for ongoing years. So this $10,000 would then get redirected to the select board assistant. At least that's the idea. Right, because this year it's this year, we're, Dylan's going to need some assistance. Next year, not. And the funding's there this year. For the TA. Yeah. yeah. Well, almost. Yeah. We need to meet. It will, there's more fun down below. Um, the insurance went down a bit, 3500 bucks. Um, our Lister's budget uh, went up 19%. 19.5%, keep that in mind. That's uh, 4,251, that's a big one. How do you know the insurance would go down? Because um, we pay our insurance uh, in a calendar year, and we just got our bill for the calendar year. So I can only tell you how much, you know, it's gonna be from July 1st to um, December 31st. I can't tell you next year. So this is, so BLCT's insurance is a calendar year. And that's what they projected for the calendar year. So well, well, they've year. already billed us. We just paid our first half of the year. Super we received like a $5,000 credit for being good or all the towns being good. Listers went up four. Listers went up forty-two fifty. And um, you know, to be fair, twelve hundred of that is computer expense. That whole get right thing. Um, uh, miscellaneous. I just level funded it. Thirty-three hundred for the ord ordinance committee. That's that's new. Parks and Rec is level funded. Payroll taxes. I didn't know what to do with this, so I just brought it to a nice round thirty-five grand. It's probably not going to be that number. No, it'll depend on what you pay for salary. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to go through all the salaries and yeah. figure it out. Uh, planning and zoning went up twenty-three hundred. Big percentage increase. So keep that in mind. Twenty-two percent. But uh, once again, to be fair, most of that is this line right here, the computer expense. They all share the different costs. Right, that $500 extra in salary is negligible compared to that. Um, and then here's our select board budget. Uh, you can see, plain as day, 24-hour administrative assistant. I have 20,000 in there for that. We have so that, that's, for the, right. that's for the TA in under the select board budget. That's right. And then also the ten thousand is going to be transferred from highway budget. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to put money in each person in each department's budget line item. Yeah, line item that reflects their Country. needs for the for town administration, like HR. Right, because the town administrator will be doing the HR for the highway department. So yes. maybe we need more than 10,000 in there for that, because that's a heavy lift. You know, it's just one way to do it. I don't know. We, but, have that for the TA? we have 20,000 in our budget, and we have 40,000 allocated in the fund, and we have Lucian's 10,000 uh, in, in future years. So this is a, is it a full-time TA? 
I don't think we can get a full-time TA for the numbers we're talking. So uh, Linda suggested 24 hours so they could get uh, retirement. That's a good idea. It's, it's compromise. It's not what I prefer. It's not my vision, but it might be, I don't know. You grow into it. Yeah. So Open to ideas. I don't know. If your scribe is included in that 20,000, correct? No. That's the recorder. Uh, that may be recorder. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yep. But again, if you keep that in the line, it could even just be absorbed if that's something that gets absorbed with the whomever we might hire right. to be the admin assistant. Yeah. All right. Keep it moving. We've already seen the town clerk's budget, 5.8%. What's the total in the slave budget? 26.6. Versus? 26. Yeah, what's the uh, now it's 6,600. <laughs> so it's an increase of 20,000. That's 20. The 20. I can send this to whoever is interested in yeah. mm -hmm. okay. All right. um, And then um, uh, Linda thought, Linda and I thought it would, without more information, we just level funded the town hall, the town office, and the town report. We expect, we think this number is a little bit heavy, but it's in there. Still wouldn't be all that much anyway. Right. right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the town building maintenance fund and the Wilkett Fire Department are both level funded. So, let's um, get to the brass tacks here. So, like I said, I broke out the increase with the debt and broke out the increase without the debt. So the general portion, uh, which is basically the budget minus the highway, is actually going up 17%. But if you take out that uh, debt, that 53,000 in debt, we're incurring a 7% increase, right? The highway is going up 3.65%. Uh, so the total increase is 9.8% in our budget this year, if this is what you want to run with. Last year, the budget went up 8.4%, right? So from a year-to-year -year comparison, it's not that much different. Now, if you take out the debt, our budget's going up 5%. Can you just move it out so we can see the bottom numbers on the red line? Oh, yeah. I mean, you would put it without debt, assuming that it's going to, that that's going to be offset by FEMA or something. Um, I, I ask that one more time. Well, you 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 quoted the percent increase with debt and then without debt. Right. And I'm just curious, what would happen for us to be without debt? Right. So it would go up five point one nine percent. Right. And the reason I did that is because the debt we can't control. Yeah. The five point one nine percent we can control. Okay, so it's. It, I see. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But but the but the real number is going to be the seventeen, right? The real number is going to be nine point eight four percent. That's with the debt. Yeah. That's of, the of, of, that's of, highway, yeah, that's yeah of which five point one nine percent is variable. I can't see that. Yeah, no, that it's a good question. It just kind of laid it out. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's fifty nine five one eight for the five point one nine percent, and for the full nine point eight four, it's one twelve seven eight nine. Is that all the debt that you included in that percentage, or just? No, that was just the fifty three grand that we incurred this year, right? For the North Wilkett Road, right, right. Major event that was last year. Right. So everyone knows it wasn't our, this year's. <laughs> our budget is so vulnerable. Yeah, any it's the tax thing yeah. like that. I mean, I, it seems like in past the only knob we've turned is try to control costs, 
And that works in the short term, but it exposes you down the line without any revenue. Right, and we can't control the sheriff, we can't control the school. So we're only limited to what we do as a municipality, which limits what our taxpayers have for resources. Yeah. Mike, what was the highway budget last year increase? Uh, what's the highway budget increase? Yeah, last year. It was a decrease, it looks like. It was an increase of 30000 So that would have been about... You, you on town clerk or town hall, Mike? Oh, sorry, I'm on town clerk. <laughs> Uh, there it is. Yeah, it was an increase of about 30 grand. Do we have anything in there about the riprap and the you know, budgeting for that? We should not let you take that. I, I didn't hear you. The riprap that we have to be planning for for the next 16 years, is there anything in there pertaining to that? No. That will be. We do. Well. I mean, I do have two grants in for the Maury Hill and East Down Water Road, which will the rip rise in that price. If better back roads approve them, there'll be rip rap there. But as far as any other rip rap in town, it's going to be a FEMA thing. Do they have to the grants that you have from better back roads? Do they have to have matches, local matches? Yes, we have a. We have to, 20%, I think it is, we have to match. And is that in there? Yes. Yeah, those are grants we've pursued before and actually have budgeted before. We just weren't able to get them done in a timely manner. They total a little over, what, 50, 60,000 between the two of them? Yeah, and it's and it, and it, it helps us achieve the goal of getting to the, uh, the road erosion inventory. Which is the ultimate, that's the 16 year goal is, you know, that's the big report that. As long as we're moving in the right direction, right? I'll just keep doing it. Oh, hopefully. Does the outside equipment use the uh, roadside mowing? That's the that's roadside mowing. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Linda, this. State general permit versus the DEC. I didn't understand the difference. They should both be in there separately. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot. So the state general permit was in last year. I think that goes away, but I need to check. I think that goes away, and now we have the third 1,350 permit. Oh, uh, well, that's good news. Just put a question mark, and I will look into it. Great. Okay. Have you looked at revenue yet? I'm sorry? Have you looked at revenue yet? Um, no. I, I was, I, no, I haven't had any talks about revenue. It's in here, down here, and Linda has some rough numbers in there. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it's mostly there. What's the, uh... it looks very similar. Well, that went down, recording fees. You want, a, you want a total is what you're saying? What's the revenue for taxes? No, we don't put that in there. No, we talk about property taxes. Mm -hmm. Last year was 1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 6. Mm -hmm. This year is 1.4, 1. 4. 1. 4. 6. So recording fees are going to go down almost $10,000? I don't understand you, Phil. Um, I can't see that. Our appraisals, they go up. I mean, are we gonna get oh, up? that we went down. We went down. Ninety-five. We're down to ninety-five. We were close to hundred less. I'm talking about the amount of money that the taxes on property generate for what? You got a budget, anticipated revenue. Up here, um, somewhere, it's what you uh, How much we a penny raises, you mean? Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Um, so, uh, recording what? fees, did I uh, put that in there wrong? Does it say? It yeah, you wrong? did. Yeah. It went down, went about 10 Yeah, that, that's not right. 
That's a typo, or it's in the wrong space, or something. Yeah, throw a question mark on that one too. Then. Well, well, didn't you figure in your budget it would be fifteen in the town clerk's budget in your little scenario? We, yeah, 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 kind of. That's what yeah, I would kind of put in. There. Those are the same. Yeah, oh, I guess. that's what it is. Because it's an in, in out. It's not a a cost to the taxpayers. It's a um, revenue source. Yeah, so fifteen hundred. Yeah. Zero there. Right, so whatever that number ends up turning out to be, it's not but really going to affect the taxpayers it's because it just, either. it's not, well, it's, it just goes it's away. Paid, it's paid to be Right. Well, it's, it's, paid it's, it's, a, it's, it's just a pass to the auditor. Right, it's, it's, it's yeah. so, it's so the, that, that number, should it even change $10,000, wouldn't affect, the which shouldn't affect actual. Well, it should if it comes out up top. Tarts yeah, to be recognized. Absolutely. Aaron. And is then the miscellaneous a, uh, thousand you could put in there because it looks like that's been all the way across, Mike. I can't see what it is for. Oh, pilot. Uh, it's it's a, right below that. It's miscellaneous. It's miscellaneous. You have a thousand dollars. And a thousand every, well, for the last couple of years. You could plug that just for the. So the only thing I don't have is any fund, fund balance, balance revenue. And liquor licenses, we not have any this year? Public fund balance would be right um, That's about $80. Two places in town? Volcat and North Volcat stores. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Doug, I, I would like Doug was. If you have an estimate of uh, revenue from taxes and how that compares to last year yet, that's what I was trying to that's what That was Bill's. Was trying to figure yeah. Out. No, because this we haven't set the tax rate for this budget that starts July 1st. The dogs are going to have to have some idea of what the tax rate would be based on the grand list. No, we never have. Do you have an idea of how much the grand list has gone up from last year to this year, or this year to next year? Um, I do not know. You'd have to ask a lister. I think they're just starting to work on the transfers to know, so that would end March 31st. Last year we were talking about one cent raised about fifteen thousand dollars. So it hasn't changed much. I don't think so. No. Not until we do a reappraisal. Um, this, you know, not really much that's changed. Not a lot of new buildings going on. You have to have when you present the vote, the vote uh, to the voter when you present no, the budget. No. The way that I've seen towns do it is they'll have expenses, they'll have revenues, and break up revenues based on taxes, and that's how they derive the tax fees with the differences there. Well, it's kind of dangerous because you're not even working on a grand list that you even know anything about, so you're just projecting something that people get excited about and could be totally wrong. I think ELTC advises not to do it that way. And you haven't plotted a fund balance and yeah. There isn't any. They're using it for the um forty thousand for the yeah. assistant. They did not and uh, I think there's about six thousand, isn't it? You mean in addition to the forty? It's just left over at the end of the year. It's about six thousand dollars. Yeah, something like that. Plus, you've got uh, 20,000 capital. Right, we have, yeah, right. it's about, well, it's about 12,000. There's a North Wilkie grant match and office equipment. But yeah, 40,000 is in the TA fund. And um, we were thinking about 2807, which is computer equipment, and $1,000 for the solar. Uh, putting that towards the TA as well, asking the asking the town to reallocate that. Money. No, you you can do that as a select board. Oh, we can. Because you designated it there, you can unassign it for that mm -hmm. and reassign it. Because um, those are funds that you are no longer going to be used. You've assigned it to something, and they're left over. Which is what we did with this. We got the twenty. Okay, so yeah, I would I would advocate for doing that. 
brings the 40,000 up to 43,800. Are you making a motion? Well, I put it on your agenda. Yeah, the meeting. Right, I think yeah, we're second. trying to come to consensus of any changes without making a motion is... Yes. Um, right. If, if, if it's a change that we all think we can agree about, we would motion it into the budget when we do the budget. Yeah, well, well we're kind of doing it. Right. I mean, the question is where are we on that? So. I mean, we don't have it completely filled out yet to accept it. Would you agree with that, Linda? Yeah, I, I think it's worth you have it. Yeah. Send it out, let them think about it, and then at the next meeting, is you have time, then you will need to either adopt it right. or, or change it and sign it. And, and so there's only the two question marks at this point of. I think we reduced it to one. Well, we reduced it to one, right? Yeah, yeah you're right. Yep. Um, so really, yeah, you're right. This thing's almost ready to ship because you just went by it, Mike. Oh, yeah. it's, it. it's in the Wait, 90th percentile at this point, I would say. Yeah. And that, if anything, that would just reduce it. We don't know if we have to spend it. Right. So the budget that we'd be sending out is a cap. Right. You would just have it for right. around. You could and uh, I think Greensboro just adopted a 5% increase. Um, in Morrisville's. Morrisville's looking about a 5%. Hyde Park, I haven't talked to, I talked to Johnson, they're looking at around 5%. Seems right in the ballpark of the other towns. Yeah. Question about the, uh, the 40,000 from TA. Yeah. Is that um, uh, going forward, assuming a TA will be needed in future years, yeah. how would that be budgeted? Because right now it's being taken out of um, an existing fund. Yeah, right. Good question. So I don't, I don't have all the answers, but one thing, one way forward that I can see is the board would have to be mindful of that, right? We have 43 plus perhaps another 30. We'd have 70. Um, we would not want to hire right up against that 70 limit. We yeah. want to hire slightly below that because we wouldn't have that $40,000 carryover like you're saying. But, I, you know, we added 20 to the select board. We have 10 um, from the highway. We possibly have Linda's consulting fees in the town clerk's budget. Maybe we add two more line items at the next budget, and now we're funded going forward. Yeah, I, I personally like the idea of that year in where we have it funded, we could really see where they're spread out um, where that, that TA would be spread out and see where the investment is. And then every you're talking about res and respected IP. department should have that line item. I think that might be confusing to <clears throat> tax holders who are reading this budget. I mean, it, there's going to be a, it, a it, select board line and, and then there's actually a piece coming out of this other budget. Right, as a contribution for services, I mean, it's it's hard to break it out and throw the big number after, if you would ever build it up to a, a 40 hour week with the family plan, that's a really large number in a volatile budget to throw on one particular department is the only reason, the only way I'm looking at it. But again, this is, Mike's right when he says that the answer isn't necessarily cut in stone in how to move forward, but um, sharing the burden amongst the departments that will be using yeah. Yeah, I this, no, no, I, I understand. Uh, I just, all I'm saying is that it would be difficult to get that if you're just simply reading this. Book. Right, and, the, and if there's anything else I would want to say to that is that what we've learned through the audit in the years that I've been here is that they prefer the extra line item. They, they would prefer it get detailed in, in the budget. They would rather see it there. One thing we could do going forward to make it more explicit, because I agree with you, is um, instead of that temporary labor, it would be TA yeah. or yeah. something like that. That'd be great. Absolutely. That'd Absolutely. Help solve that. Yep. What's your total to you on the anticipated revenue? Um, uh, well, we don't have it completely filled out yet. You don't have fun balance. Uh, we don't have, oh, right, we don't have fun balance. So, yeah, I guess we could tell you. And that's another question mark we need. So there is two. No, because there won't be any. Mm -hmm. it's going to yeah, right. We're snagging that. Oh, right, it's sure. But it will change. Two hundred and fifty six two hundred and fifty seven thousand dollars. Okay, and 
difference there is about the fund balance from the last year. For this year. Yeah. Which was um, the half of the bar chart. The other half of the bar chart. Uh, up in debt? Thanks. If I remember correctly, the fund balance that was put in this year, the balance this year's budget was basically the other half of the bar chart. Sale. If I could just if I could just ask you to stop because Linda's on a time budget and so she does have to go. If there's any other questions for Linda, she's running late on the schedule that she even gave us. So I'd like to thank her for it. But yeah, it's putting a lot of time. To right. If there's anything else, I don't want to hold her up any longer than we already have. Sorry, Bill. I didn't mean to cut you. That's fine. I understand. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Have fun at Big Club. Definitely will. Bill, continue your thought. I'm sorry. Where's John? He's in my office and I'll put him in the room. Do not let me. Yes. All right. Uh, sorry, so, so you all are work. comfortable with going toward a TA um, gradually rather than all at once? Well, I think. In my perspective, we've learned a lot through the process on the commitment, what it takes, and what the costs are. So right. um, this approach to me seems actually most most prudent for the town. Okay, I mean, and you've heard me say many times that you don't necessarily get it from A to B in a straight line. I just was asking because it's different than what I heard this summer. Well, we we had we had that approach, and the taxpayers spoke. It is different. <laughs> Two taxpayers spoke. Two taxpayers would change their mind, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Just that is, and yep. look, I'm not pushing that. I'm just just wanted out to make sure you are comfortable with this and not feeling like this is something you're being dragged into screaming and hollering. It's right. still it still steps in the right direction. I, mean, I, I got a budget total of about $120,000. And that includes the sheriff's okay. um, I don't know what the increase is going to be in a grant list. So, you know, when you set the tax rate, that's, as Linda says, that's, that's an exercise right now. I was just trying to get an idea if the listers knew how much the grant list might be going up, because that'll give you an idea what Penny brings. Um, my, you got forty thousand dollars dedicated reserve, and I want to emphasize the word surplus, not reserve. It's a surplus. You dedicated forty thousand dollars in surplus for a TA. You've got twenty thousand dollars dedicated. Surplus capital fund, which I personally love to see you keep. Okay, um, you've got some other things you talked about there that um, uh, you could rededicate to surplus. I I think you ought to consider I, budgeting about a forty thousand dollar. Fund balance surplus in your budget. That would be roughly eighteen thousand dollars more than is in this year's budget. And it wouldn't be budgeting all of the surplus that you've got. Um, all right. It would be saving the fifteen that was identified this past June. Would be saving some of the other stuff just in case. Um, and it's not getting out of hand in terms of budgeting surplus. But if you budgeted $40,000 in surplus, um, you would drop the 120 to the $100,000 range in terms of increase. If you pulled out the debt service, 
which you got no control over. Then you're talking about an increase in the $50,000 range, which is three cents on, you know, three cents on the tax rate. Um, I, th that's the way I play this if you're going to play it. I, I, when you say a spe Kurt said you special fund for TA, it's really not a special fund. It's dedicating some of your surplus for a certain purpose. Well, you've got twenty, thirty thousand dollars in here, excuse me, for TA basically, or whatever it happens, plus some flexibility in the town clerk's office. Put forty thousand dollars here for surplus. Um, that modifies your increase somewhat. Are you are you saying put it, put a line item under right under fund balance? You got it already. Thirty five thousand and two sixteen, thirty five thousand two seventeen, fifty seven thousand two eighteen, twenty two this year, forty next. So it's not fund balance that's out in left field uh, somewhere. You're not looking at the audit. You're looking at the. Um, I'm looking at the budget. Yeah, the time report. I'm looking at page seventeen of the budget. Let me catch up to you. Sorry. Okay. You make it. You can make a hell of a case. People, I, you know, it's it's a tax increase. Yes, it is. But you make a hell of a case that if you backed out the bridge and the storm, we'd be pretty much just doing what we've been doing for years in terms of increases. Um, and um, that that's that's the way I would recommend you play it. I'm, so so one more time. The fund balance is twenty two thousand one fifty five. Right. Well, next year I'd make it forty. Ah, I see what you're saying. And use your money that you dedicated for TA. Or yeah, use just that's where it's going. It's good. So that extra eighteen grand is going towards the TA. Is what you're saying? That's right. Well, actually, that extra eighteen grand is going to Sorry. reduce your hit. To the taxpayers for the next twenty right. to around one hundred, right. which would be about four. Six cents on the tax rate, six seven cents on the tax rate, which is about what it was this year because of the bridge, and it's going to be next year because of the storm. The other game you could play, and I, Linda would probably kill me. If you really think you're going to get this money back, you could budget fifty thousand dollars revenue from the federal government or something like that. But that's taking a chance. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd rather I'd rather be able to reallocate it and apply it to the town. Yeah, that's something that would help, help us finance the third year of the TA. What the town's also got to realize is that. You could turn around in another year and have one hell of a windfall. But that could bump us from the 24 to the 40 and get us you our could benefit. You have one hell of a windfall a year out because of FEMA and recovering all of this right. money. And just reality. And then we're sitting here, how do we go from A to B without really blowing all that windfall? I see, the, I see your point about that. We're hoping that this year we can get some funds from FEMA to offset that $53,000 loan payment. And then that leaves another two hundred grand that we have to clear the books for, right? Because we took out a quarter million dollar loan. Right. So I mean, we, could, we could be really having some fun in a couple of years, in a year or two. I, don't put that in the paper for us. Uh, the, um, <laughs> the other thing I really like about this, and I want you to really think about, you know, I've been telling you about doing a capital fund, and we got twenty thousand dollars in a capital fund. But with this fifty-three thousand budget that may get wiped off the books, you know, in a year or two, you've already got it budgeted. That could be converted to capital fund. Exactly. Without raising taxes one penny. Without now you're not giving anybody a tax break, but you don't raise taxes one penny right. to convert it to capital. It's the same thing with the bridge. So 
three or four years down the pipe, all these we could have close to 100,000 yep. bucks that we could convert annually to capital fund like you do with the truck. Because those are all we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, you know, this budget is pretty lean. This budget that I know it's, it's going to have to be after the natural disaster and fire truck right. and bridge and all the stuff that we do. But it's actually a 5% increase. Right. And we have some fluff built into the town clerk's budget. And if we were to subtract that fluff, we'd be, you know, 2%. Well, again, it's sort of matter who gets selected, but I, I wouldn't, don't, don't ever use the word fluff to, to me. It's just that we're being um, conservative. Prudence. There's prudence in this house. Exactly. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, I, I, I got to tell you, guys, I'm proud of you. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Well, the other thing on this TA, you got to remember one thing. You got a million dollars worth of equipment over there. Who's been watching for you for the last 10 years? Yeah, we figured that out. Yeah. You know, so. I'm not, People have to think about that real serious. I, There's I, a million bucks over there. I think I really think that between the baby stepping in on the TA and then Bill pointing out that monies will be opening up that we've already planned revenue for without having to raise taxes over the next few years, kind of steps out a little bit of a path to get us to where we want to be at the end of the day without having to do an Order overburden some tax increase to the taxpayers. And there's, but, and there's nothing that prevents you from going in the next year. Let's get the office organized and running really well, and looking at a TA position come January or February, when you might have enough money in here. You have also an idea of what might happen then vis-a-vis -vis FEMA and that story. So you might be, a year from now, we might have a much clearer picture of it. So yeah, we got the money, we can do this, and it's not going to cost much anymore. Yeah, that's a good point. I was kind of looking at that 10% budget increase and thinking, you know, we're going to have to we're gonna have to defend that. And that's... that's well, there's really nothing in here that's not very defensible. It's true. It's oh, true. Yeah, yeah. It all makes it very good sense. And yeah. I'm disappointed with a 24 hour a week town administrator. That's not my vision. Well, I know that. Um, and that, that surprised me when I first came in tonight. But the more I think about it, I, I think you're you're on the right path. It's it's something I feel like the taxpayers can, 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 would be to this. Right. And we have a plan where we can fund it going forward. It just kind of fits. It's starting to carve itself out a lot more than it was the last time we. And one other thing, I'm not bothered to talk. I, come on, that talk, yeah, I know. Um, looked at the school budget. Um, <laughs> the school budget is going to be damn near level funded this year. Is it? Mm -hmm. So, this, you know, this is a good year. Um, I don't know if I want you to look at it. This is a good year. Every year, they just get a $115 dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, seriously, they, um, their budget looks pretty darn good. It's going to be hardly any increase at all to the taxpayers, unless, they do, unless they've done something between January and, I mean, December and now that I don't know about. Um, so that looks good. What, what duties do you anticipate the 22-hour TA to take on? Um, HR, um, revenue, grants, and um, other, you know, strategic general oversight. <laughs> yeah, I mean oversight of, of what they can, but HR is really a big one. Yeah. Our guys are completely un. I mean, we adopted a previous select board adopted a merit pay scheme. We do no employee reviews. Um, you know, insurance is not addressed. I do think there are a ton of efficiencies to be wrung out of mm -hmm. the budget, and um, I, I, that that would be my choice. Uh, you know, to, that's what I advocate for. Is I guess first charge. Right. What I'm, what I'm looking at is it, it really is kind of the same job description that was previously put forward. Just, yeah. just less hours. 
Yeah. Uh, much more scaled back. Yeah, yeah, yeah much more scaled back. Yeah. College educated municipal planner, right. someone who does this for a living for. Yeah. Yep, this is still someone who will be working with LCPC in my mind. This is still someone who are going to be working with all the local resources yeah. that we do use as a smaller municipality with a limited tax base. And at that rate, what, what is the hourly rate then? Um, well, we don't know. Okay. So we have a pot of money, um, and we're going to have to think through. Well, I guess we could think. I don't have that calculated right now, but I bet you I can come up with a, a range pretty quickly. Good question, sir. Realistic question that we should expect to have to answer mm -hmm. moving forward. All right, great. Well, uh, Mike, with your budget, pre budget presentation, excuse me, and Jen, for your hard work, thank you so much. And Linda's not here, but definitely want to thank her on the record. Um, yeah, she was a huge help. My understanding of all this has come world in one month, so it's really starting to come into place. Bill, I'd like to thank you for coming. For the budget, uh, you eat, sleep, and allow any comments from the public, but I've made plenty. But I just wanted to wish you all a happy new year. I hope you had a great Christmas. Thank and, you. Uh, first, one of this was because I refused to come down the hill when it's snowing. Yeah. And the other one, I had a DRB. Yes, you were here, but not with us. Um, but uh, Bill's one of the only people who a budget would keep him up at night as opposed to keep him putting him to bed when he was here. Yeah, I'm, I'm weird that way. <laughs> So we have one other thing on the agenda, right? Is the broker yes. room. Yep. So I don't see any correspondence in here, so I'm not exactly sure what. That was that email, remember? Oh, regarding the, um, what, the reclass, or. Yeah, so, Lucian, you want to talk it out, or do you want me to? Go ahead. Uh, so we have that issue on the Burke Road, right? Right. We got to do something with it. We got to do something with it, and the request is to spend six thousand dollars on engineering services right now. Is this with Tyler or with Jane? James? Or Joey. 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 Yeah. yeah. Joey. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he was on. He was working for us private. This right. 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 Yep. I mean, it's they're they're convoluted, which is why we had trouble with the minutes last so week. There's, uh, there's so there's one question. It may be prudent for us to do it now for FEMA reimbursement. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So this is this is a request for six thousand dollars worth of engineering to go into in Brook Road. I just want to make this clear. Is this the big culverts at the end yes. of the field? It's eight, eight foot culvert. The bottom is got beat out this last storm. When the LPC did their report, it was in good condition. I think what happened, a lot of big rocks, you know, okay. 8 to 10 inch, 12 inch, 4 inch, whatever, come down and beat the hell out of the bottom. So the they, existing they culvert tear up, that survived they tear the up storm. the bottom of the culvert. Okay, so the existing culvert that survived the storm took in damage on this last major activity. Yes, sir. To the point where now we're considering it an emergency, and therefore we, we should get engineering services. Yes. Is this the issue that was worded wrong in the minutes? It was worded correctly. It was, it was worded correctly. I introduced this confusion because the okay, but we're talking about the same thing. Was was four wheel drive. For, okay, right. okay. There but was okay. there was confusion, gotcha. right? But the content right. was Brook Road. Okay, right. okay. <laughs> right. But that right. is the same thing right. that we. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Well. Um, so the construction is going to be very expensive. Yeah, I mean. I, so this is a put out to bid, very expensive construction through, oh, yeah, yeah, through yeah, our yeah, procurement clause. Yes. Yeah, so the engineering yeah, through our procurement clause, we could go ahead and do the engineering right here and now, yeah. assign that to Joey yeah. mm -hmm. and stay within our procurement clause. But then once that comes back, it's our procurement suggests that we put it out to bid. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I just want to make clear that this is our new policy that we've adopted. I want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Well, it's, we have adopted it yet. We have to. I was going to hopefully have an agenda, agenda item, item for next week. But it's going to have to be next week. Okay. So, to have an action item for an agenda item for the procurement clause to be adopted next week. Yeah. But we know we can work within FEMA standards to go ahead and get that engineering done. 
Yeah, because it's below 10 grams. Because it's below 10 grams. Right. We've, we've learned that in the yeah. last And he said months. it was an emergency, right? In the email? I just yeah. sworn I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Said, um, okay, so. I think he, he went even into, you know, people could get hurt. So that being said, according to the previously how we've approached these and the, the factors involved with it, less than 10,000 fits within the FEMA guidelines, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to have Joey from. Wilson engineer. Wilson engineer, Joe Wilson from Wilson Engineering, thank you. I would never come up with that. Um, provide the engineering scope for the uh, Brook Road culvert. I'll second the motion. By Richard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. Um, this procurement clause is really, we, we'll get it in the books because it really gives us a lot of direction on how we can get this stuff done, and I like it. Yeah. All right. No, no, I think was the adding the library to it, which I think you had suggested. Um, I don't know if you remember, but um, when did it finish? Yeah. Adding the librarian to the procurement policy. We had a couple oh. of little things too. Linda, Linda didn't think that was a good idea because it comes from the, they did have some overseeing body. The trustees. The trustees, yeah. Oh, good. Elmore Pond <coughs> Road, the federal highway. I got Jim Coaster called me today and told me that. Really? So the Elmore Pond Road and North Wolf Road <coughs> are federal highways. So I started today folders breaking all this stuff out for federal versus state because I had it all lumped together before. So it's North Wolf Road and Elmore Pond Road. Elmore Pond Road is a federal highway. And I even it connects two state. It can take. It's it connects two state major. And areas. that's and that's what Jim said. It's a connector. I mean, it's for a connector in the traffic. The volume of right. traffic. No, that makes sense for me. All right. But it connects okay. to State Route 12 and State Route 15. There's, there's even North Wolcott Road is not the one that does it, you know, but everything else awesome. wouldn't connect. Yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense to me. And um, the, oh, speaking of just while we're on it, the boys filled the pothole, did a great job, and then that rain definitely took it out. So just another layer where they can get around to it. Yeah, we need to yeah, we, we talk about that again. We were well. talking about meats the same yeah, yeah. Well, great in general, but we were held it out to the mirror. All right, yeah, all right, Lucy, we're going to move through this. Yep, yep. the bridge work at the North Wolcott Road there, out of four wheel four we four 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 drive. Yes. We've all got right. that up to snuff now. Temporarily, yeah. there's still a lot of work to do there, but it should be all right for the runoff this spring. And, oh. The North Walker Road, I've broken everything down into five different segments for the feds. That's the way they want it. Cool. I still got some more work to do on it, but I, I faxed it out. Yep, more emailed it out today. More pictures are better. You and emailed uh, something? <laughs> we'll be that on the rent. <laughs> and uh, somebody from the state and federal is going to contact me here in the next week or so. Awesome. We're on the road. Awesome. We'll tell the boys they've been doing a great job with my road. Yeah, thank you. Um, big storm coming up this weekend, so. Yeah. I thought, I thought there was a warning for tonight. Tonight. Tonight, tonight we had five to seven, but uh, the, in the MLK, so no buses on the road, which is good. Just a quick comment. Looking at your minutes from the last meeting, uh, the issue of you're having with the old town hall vis a vis the neighbor. Oh, the water, yep. Has anybody said anything to your liability insurance? So that's a question I wanted to ask Linda tonight, but I didn't get a chance to because we right now have two attorneys that we've been using. We've been using Tim for the eviction, and then we've been using. But he's talking about contacting your liability insurance. Right. So my my initial action I was to call our town attorney, but I didn't know which one to call, so I hadn't actually. Talk about your Right. Right. So now, now emailing passive is probably a better idea. But, uh, I mean, if, if okay. there's an issue uh, like that, I would think your liability insurance would cover company the cost. Yeah, it should be reimbursement. Yeah. Person. All right. So, Deb, if you can uh, do an action item for Eric to email a uh, VLCT or passive regarding the um, the piggybacking of the water. Um. Thank you, Bill. All right, well, if no one has anything else at this point, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. I call uh, 
the meeting to adjourn at 723 on Wednesday, January 15th. I, I second that. We all, did. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming.